from the University of South Carolina. Your news, your sports, your weather. Carolina News begins now. Hello, and welcome to the Carolina News Fastcast. I'm Todd Heath reporting to you from Columbia, South Carolina. With USC's campus closed due to coronavirus concerns, we have reporters spread across the country working hard to bring you the latest on what's going on in Columbia. South Carolina's coronavirus numbers continue to climb as the number of cases in the state has reached 3,439 with 87 deaths as of this morning. In the U.S., there are over 587,000 confirmed cases and over 23,000 deaths. In a press conference Monday evening, Governor Henry McMaster expressed his gratitude to those adhering to the stay-at-home order, which he said is working. However, these preventative measures must continue. Now's not the time to let up. We have to, have to keep on going and keep working and working together and following the, the advice and recommendations that have come from the official sources. And I believe that we will we'll make great progress and we'll come out of this uh, very well. Those eligible for coronavirus stimulus checks may see those payments coming soon. The IRS has announced that the first economic impact payments were being deposited into people's bank accounts this past weekend. Individuals who make up to $75,000 a year are eligible to receive $1,200. Around 90% of married couples in America are expected to receive $1,200 to $2,400. Those couples could earn up to $500 per child as well. The first people to see these relief checks will be those who use direct deposit, but if you don't use direct deposit, paper checks will be sent out starting in early May. In response to the coronavirus outbreak, states are forcing students and teachers to face a new way of learning from their own homes. Reporter Liana Lamasella gets an inside look at how one middle school teacher educates her students, but doubles as a mother. This is the new reality for Kelly Eastman teaching students from home while also trying to raise her own kids. Miss Eastman is a middle school teacher at Intermediate East in Toms River, New Jersey. With a five and three year old and no ability to hire daycare, she struggles to teach students day to day. I'm about to go on a Google Meets live and <laughs> Shane's screaming and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what to do, Todd's at work. <laughs> Ms. Eastman faces new challenges now, not only teaching her students, but trusting that they're actually doing the work. The kids who don't reach out to you and you're like, what's going on? You know, I've had a couple kids that I personally wrote the messages like, what's up? You're not getting this work done. And I know you're capable of doing it. Like I've known you for eight months now and some of them respond and some of them don't. So it's hard kind of not having that physical contact. I mean, I feel like I communicated in the past, but like really, really having to communicate with parents and students all day, every day. As much as a struggle it is to balance her kids and workload, she says it's equally a struggle for some of the parents and students as well. I see both sides. I see kids who are struggling hard, asking a lot of questions, and I'll keep going into Google Meets with them. Um, and then I have other kids who submit work in five minutes and seriously vanish. Eastman says finding the fair amount of work for the students without overwhelming them can be hard because for some it's difficult, but others easier. Eighth grader at Intermediate East, who doubles as my cousin, Justin Lamasella, explains his home learning experience. It is pretty easy because like, I just FaceTime all my friends and we do the work together. I, sometimes I'll call my friends or like ask my mom. Or if I really need to, I'll just search up on Google. Most days when he finishes his 30-minute class, he leaves the rest of the day up to... I'll just go on my PlayStation for like 30 minutes and then I'll eat sometimes, make some breakfast, some lunch, whatever I gotta make. Eastman knows this is the case for some, but she knows how difficult it is for her students to be motivated while at home. I want to say I'm really proud of them because it's hard. When you're home, there's so much more temptation to not do schoolwork. When you're in school, you're like, all right, well, I'm here anyway. Just simply following directions and turning in their finished work makes it easier for Eastman to get back to her duties as a mother. They are losing it. Not being with their cousins, not being with their friends, not being with their grandparents, like, the, the meltdowns are real. <laughs> I mean, they're really losing it, and I feel bad. Being a teacher from home while also having an obligation as a mother has become more stressful than normal. Being able to put yourself in everyone's shoes and taking a deep breath before you react has been pretty hard, but trying to work on that. <laughs> while some are going stir-crazy at home, putting yourself in other shoes might help us get by for now. For Carolina News, I'm Leanna Lamatella. During this pandemic, not only are teachers struggling, but many people who are forced to work from home are facing similar challenges. 
The United States Supreme Court justices will get back to work soon, but they will have to adjust to a new style of work. The Supreme Court stated that the justices and counsel will be communicating by telephone in all hearings next month to comply with public health guidelines. The main topics of discussion will be President Trump's unreleased tax returns, the faithless electors of the Electoral College, and President Trump's attempt to weaken the contraceptive mandate. The Supreme Court has always been against live audio sessions. However, because of COVID-19, the public will finally get a sense of how the sessions go in real time. These sessions are set to take place between May 4th and May 6th, and also May 11th through May 5th. Earlier today, former President Barack Obama endorsed his former Vice President Joe Biden in his 2020 presidential campaign. Obama released a video on his Twitter page showing his support for the man he chose to be Vice President. Obama said it was one of the best choices he ever made. The endorsement comes just a day after Senator Bernie Sanders gave his endorsement to Biden, clearing the way for Biden as the Democratic nominee frontrunner. South Carolina is continuing to recover after a tornado tore through the South early Monday morning claiming at least nine lives. Officials are still gathering information at this time, but believe the tornado touched down in multiple locations across the Midlands, causing damage to several homes and buildings. At its peak, the storm left 290,000 customers without power across the state. Officials say that 90,000 still had no power Monday night. Aside from that devastating tornado, the Midlands saw a warm and sunny beginning of the week. Our Corey Michael Peeler is in Columbia, South Carolina to let you know if the sunshine is sticking around. Corey? That's right, Todd. I'm currently in the Five Points District in Columbia, South Carolina, where the weather is actually pretty nice. It is 70 degrees and sunny, but just a few nights ago, we did have that storm that brought a lot of damaging winds, rains, and even tornadoes to the state of South Carolina. But Columbia wasn't that hard hit by the storm. We only experienced powder outages in some areas of the city and there was many fallen branches and debris. As I saw on my walk earlier this morning, those branches and debris are still there in some streets in the city. But looking ahead, the weather should be pretty nice this week. Taking a look at tonight's lows throughout the state, temperatures should be dropping to the 40s and 50s for the most part throughout the state. Up in the upstate in Greenville, there will be a low of 46 degrees. In Rock Hill, 45 degrees. Right here in Columbia, a low of 52 degrees. In Aiken, 53 degrees. In Orangeburg, 54 degrees. In Florence, 51 degrees. Moving towards the coast, things will be a little warmer with it being 62 degrees in Hilton Head, 60 degrees in Charleston, and 56 in Myrtle Beach. Now going ahead and taking a look at tomorrow's highs, temperatures should be in the 60s across the board throughout the state. Up in the upstate and Greenville, there will be a high of 64 degrees in Rock Hill, a high of 62 degrees in Columbia, a high of 64 degrees, as well as in Aiken. Down in Orangeburg, there will be a high of 62 degrees, as well as in Florence. And moving towards the coast, once again, things will start to warm up a little bit tomorrow, with it being 67 degrees in Hilton Head, 64 in Charleston, and 58 in Myrtle Beach. Now taking a look at our five-day forecast, tomorrow it will be partly cloudy with a high of 64 degrees and a low of 43. On Thursday, it'll be sunny with a high of 71 and a low of 48. And moving into our weekend, things will start to warm up a little bit with it being mostly sunny with a high of 77 and a low of 60 degrees on Friday. Now moving into our weekend, the rain will be coming back and we will be experiencing thunderstorms early on in the day on Saturday, but the temperatures will be warmer with it being a high of 80 and a low of 60 degrees on Saturday. In closing out our week, the rain will still be around on Sunday, but it'll be a high of 75 degrees and a low of 56. Looking ahead throughout this week, we will be experiencing some nice weather, but again, we are under that worker home order, but that doesn't mean that you can't go outside for your daily exercise and even just to enjoy this nice weather we're having. Reporting in Five Points, Corey Michael Peeler, Carolina News. Thanks, Corey. Senior year is supposed to be a time of celebration, a year of lasts. Your last class, your last exam, your last homecoming, your last memories as a student. For athletes that play a spring sport, their last year of memories was cut all too short with a lot to be left on the field. Reporter Naja Huff spoke with a coach and a senior athlete who suddenly had their seasons stripped away. Adriana Miller is one of the thousands of athletes across the nation who had their final season cut short or canceled entirely due to the coronavirus. It feels just 
kind of like unreal is how I would describe it. Miller is the only one of three seniors on Columbia College's softball team who was there for all four years. However, Miller isn't as upset about the season ending as others. Ball isn't forever, so. And doesn't plan on using her extra year of eligibility. Um, once I heard that we did get that extra year, I decided that I wasn't going to take it. I'm going to have to go to grad school. It's just so much stuff on my plate that I feel like I couldn't handle softball on top of that. Unlike Miller, the athletes on Coach Warren Yours team don't get the option of playing another year at their level. You know, I, I feel bad really for the seniors. Yours is the head coach of the girls track team at Ridgeview High School in his sixth season. According to Yor, some athletes were able to make verbal commitments while for others, the season ending early has made it difficult to get scholarships. I may have interest in some girls and they may not be ready to pull the trigger to say, hey, we have a scholarship for them. At this point in the season, Yor and his team would be in full swing preparing for regionals on the road to the state finals again. Like you said, at this point in time, it's kind of like, okay, we're rocking and rolling. We're getting ready to, you know, gear up for win another region championship. And Columbia College softball will be preparing for conference, something Miller was looking forward to reaching for the first time this year. I've never been to conference since um, I've been here for four years. So um, the most exciting thing for me is that we never got the chance to go. Um, we could have possibly made it this year. Chances missed on seasons that could have been. Athletes hung up their cleats without knowing it was the end of one career and the start of something new. For Carolina News, I'm Nadja Huff. Spring athletes on the high school and college level aren't the only ones who've had to change their plans due to coronavirus. Phoebe Murray tells us how the NFL is modifying their upcoming draft to comply with social distancing. Phoebe? That's right, Todd. The 2020 NFL draft set for April 23rd through the 25th was originally scheduled to be in Las Vegas. It'll now take place from ESPN's headquarters in Bristol, Connecticut due to the coronavirus pandemic. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell will introduce picks from his home in Bronxville, New York. Draft hosts and a limited number of commentators will be in studio, but they will adhere to social distancing guidelines. The league previously announced that the NFL draft will also feature a draft-a-thon which will pay tribute to healthcare workers and first responders. Funds will help support six national nonprofits and their respected COVID-19 relief efforts. In Carolina Panthers news, Christian McCaffrey signed a four-year, $64 million extension yesterday, becoming the highest paid running back in NFL history. ESPN's Adam Scheffner was first to tweet the news Monday afternoon. McCaffrey would be averaging $16 million per year. The outbreak has also taken a toll on football players trying to get to the NFL. Tavian Feaster, who has worn both orange and garnet, was relying on USC's Pro Day to show off his skills to NFL scouts and coaches. It's heartbreaking to my process because uh, I couldn't really get evaluated um, without the shoulder pads and everything like everybody else uh, that went to the combine and everything. So. But with all sporting events canceled, he'll instead be sending out his greatest hits to teams from home in hopes of just one NFL offer. That's all I have today on All Things Football. Todd, back to you. Thanks, Phoebe. During these times of uncertainty, one U.S. postal worker is delivering mail and smiles, something we all need right about now. Like other essential workers, Tracy Lewis must go into work every day to bring people their packages and mail. But Lewis also sees it as her responsibility to spread joy to those along her route in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Lewis wears a new costume every day and says she just wants to make people smile. And while those along her route say she brings them happiness, Lewis says it makes her feel better as well giving people a reason to smile one costume at a time. That's all we have for the Carolina News Fastcast today. We thank you for joining us and hope you're staying happy and safe during these times. From Columbia, South Carolina, I'm Todd Heath.